In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Uh, mass parts are in the center panel of the bulletin. You can follow along, and please take home a bulletin. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, to you, brothers and sisters, greatly sinned thoughts, words, done what I failed to do, my fault, my fault, grievous fault. Therefore, as blessed Mary, ever virgin, angels and saints, you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of Father, take away the sins of the world, mercy on us. Take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, Lord God, Father, amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the fool of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished, and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. I will extol you, O oh my God and King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. 
let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. The Lord is faithful in all his words and holy in all his works. The Lord lifts up all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the spirit, if only the spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been, have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor, and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon, and happy 4th of July. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. People who know me, they know that I never really embrace the workout culture that has swept over the country in the last 50 years or so. 
Many people embrace this newfound emphasis on health and fitness, choosing to both eat right and stay active. And while I love playing certain sports like golf and softball in the old days, I have a hard time simply exercising on my own. I lose interest quickly. I look for reasons or excuses to do something else instead. And with all sincerity, I kind of admire those of you who take fit fitness so seriously. Whatever gene that is, I don't seem to have it. And one thing I really don't like about engaging in, what I don't like engaging in specifically is running. It bores me to tears. And yet it's a huge part of many people's lives. Young people don't remember a time when it was not popular, but I do, and many of you do. I was in my 20s in the 70s when all of this began. But I could never have imagined myself or imagined back then how it would become what it is today. And one of those things that amazes me the most is the number of people who choose to run marathons, 26.2 miles of pure torture, in my estimation. In this country alone, there are several large cities that host marathons that attract tens of thousands of runners. And I find that incredible. But what is even more incredible is the percentage of people who actually finish these races. People who look so ordinary and sometimes look out of shape. And yet, somehow, they have the motivation to run more miles in one day than I've run in a half a century. How in the world do they accomplish this? It seems nearly impossible. But consider this. I wonder how many of those same runners would finish all 26.2 miles if they were running all by themselves running on deserted streets with no one around? My guess is not many. My guess is that many people wouldn't even want to try or would give up once they felt over fatigued. It's one thing to run a race or do anything difficult with others at your side and others cheering you on and a much different thing to do it all by yourself. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. Every time I hear this particular reading and these words from Jesus, my first instinct is to think it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. In what way is life easy? In what way are our burdens light? Is Jesus saying that everything will be a piece of cake, be smooth sailing, if we just follow him? I don't know about you, but that has not been my experience. But then I usually take a deeper look, I try to look below the surface to see what Jesus is truly saying. And when I do that, I come to a different conclusion. A lot of our difficulty with this re reading might come from the fact that yoke and burden seem to have such negative consequences. We hear them and think of toil and exhaustion and being forced to do unpleasant things against our will. But maybe that's not the image Jesus is going for at all. Maybe he wants us to think about these things in a much different way. Let's take yoke first. It might not be obvious at the first glance, 
but a yoke implies that we are hitched to another animal, that we are not toiling alone, but are actually side by side with another who is helping. In other words, the work is being shared, not simply in the sense that someone else knows what we are going through, but is actually assisting us along the way. And likewise, the word burden doesn't have to be a bad thing. It can simply mean the work, the goal, that which we are trying to achieve. And in these senses, the words yoke and burden print a much different picture, especially for people of faith. If we think back to those who run marathons, the reason so many are able to finish is because they are in it with other people. Part of a like-minded group who are there to help and encourage, inspire, model, and lead. Marathon runners feel a part of something bigger than them themselves, part of a group effort especially when there are charities that stand to benefit from their efforts, as is almost always the case. And maybe Jesus is saying that same thing about faith, about discipleship, about life. Life is really hard. I don't have to tell you that. And if we believe that, we have to go it alone, it may feel more than a little overwhelming, a kind of prison from which there is no escaping. But if we believe that Jesus is not only leading us, but is also joined to us, helping us every step of the way, working with us, as we strive to live as God asks us to live, then our lives can become something beautiful and meaningful and in a sense, easy. Not an enormous burden holding us back and, try and tying us down, especially as we live in the times that we are, with what's going on around us in our government, in the world pandemic. That all takes faith. And one more thing. We needn't only try to see ourselves yoked to Jesus. We also need to see ourselves yoked to each other. A family of faith united for a sacred purpose, a sacred race, a sacred journey to bring Jesus to a world desperately in need of him, in need of his mercy, his kindness, his generosity, and his love. So let's not try to go it alone. Rather, let's do it together. You and I have all witnessed in this community, others and friends and family who have pulled the weight alongside us. I am pretty sure that we will never feel the urge to give up, but will rather finish the race with our friends and loved ones beside us, bringing to fulfillment all that God is asking of us. I believe in one God, Father, Lord, and of heaven earth. All things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, born Father before all ages, 
God, light, light, true God, true God, God not made, and shall come. In all things remain, men are salvation down heaven. By the Holy Spirit, incarnate the Virgin Mary, you came, man. He was crucified under Pontius Pilate, death, buried, broke again the third day, according to the scriptures, descended into heaven, he at the right hand of the Father, come again to glory and judge, living and the dead, kingdom of heaven, no end. Leave the Holy Spirit, giver of life, Seen Father, Son, Son, Lord, glorified, Book of the Prophets. Leave the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. Confess, baptism, forgiveness of sins. Resurrection of the dead. Life of the world to come. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters, let us now bring our petitions to our dear Lord, who, um, whose care is uh, far beyond what we can imagine. So with hearts full of humility and gratitude, let us request of him the following. For the church in her work of charity, for the poor and the overburdened, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, prayer. For leaders who will listen to even the humblest citizens, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, prayer. For people who have to shut God out of their lives, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For the children who discover God in our community, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, prayer. For our sick, especially Chris Barbian, Mary Metcalf, Bill Hoffman, as well as those listed in the bulletin, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, prayer. For those who have been called through death to eternal rest, especially Lisa Sandoval, for whom this Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us to the altar today by giving us the grace to be here in solidarity with the Church throughout the world. Please hear our, our prayers, not because we are so good, but because of your Son, our great High Priest, the bridge from heaven to earth, we pray these things through your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son. By his obedience we have been restored to these gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. 
Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who've pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Kingdom come, the will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, not worthy to stand under my roof, but say the word, so heal. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Blessed is he who hopes in God. Just as a reminder, I know some of you might not have been coming until the Sunday. Be two communion stations, one on the Sacred Heart side, one on the Blessed Mother side. So whichever side of the church you're on, please go to that particular station rather than cutting across. We're trying to minimize exposure to, you know, by way of walking around the whole church. So you, when you're called by the usher, come up the center aisle. You can wait on the red stripes that are on the center aisle for social distancing, then go to the respective station and then go back by your side aisle. Thanks for your cooperation.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. And Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us from battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. God, we can be humbly pray to the Prince of the Heavenly Host, our God, and to hell of Satan. All the evil spirits prowl about the world, seek the soul. Of the world.